Kathy, you want to start? Yeah. Bonjour à vous toutes et tous, vous les matinaux du dimanche matin. Merci de votre confiance et de votre solidarité. Et au nom de Alexandre Raffin et pour Egiana au 2022, pour la première année euh, à la Monnaie de Paris, nous sommes très euh, honorés d'avoir la participation de Artists at Risk pour notre euh, dernière journée euh, de foire. Artists at Risk, c'est euh, l'énergie cumulée de deux personnalités, Marita Mukonen et Ivor Stodolski, qui depuis plus de dix années, au moins dix années, œuvrent ensemble et ne ménagent pas leur temps pour soutenir les artistes euh, en fait, du monde entier qui euh, subissent euh, toute forme de, de préjudice et qui souvent euh, met, on, voient leur vie en, en danger. Artistes et artistes a pris différentes formes de soutien, l'organisation euh, disons de, euh, de manière à trouver des fonds pour soutenir de manière effective ces artistes, donc réunir ces fonds de, par différents biais, euh, gala et toute forme de, de moments de, de promotion, mais aussi et depuis quelques temps, euh, bien sûr une aide aussi administrative, pratique et matérielle pour euh, aider ces artistes à trouver véritablement les moyens d'entrer ou de sortir de leur pays, d'être accueillis dans d'autres pays, mais c'est aussi depuis quelques mois, quelque chose de tout nouveau, entrez, soyez les bienvenus, de tout nouveau, la possibilité depuis Paris euh, d'héberger des artistes, notamment en provenance d'Ukraine, grâce au soutien de la ville de Paris, qui, euh, qui a permis qu'une résidence et donc un espace de vie euh, et, et pu, euh, et bien se réalise euh, sous la houlette de Artists at Risk. Donc, merci beaucoup de nous avoir aussi témoigné de votre confiance pour... Euh, voilà pour cette table ronde aujourd'hui, et je vous, je vous cède la parole. Merci Marita, merci Vor, et merci à vous trois. Ok, oui, oui. Uh, does everybody speak English or understand it at least? Yes, somewhat. I mean, if we can, if we need, we can translate into French. I speak French, but I think we're fine. Monsieur, you understand English? Alors, je peux traduire un peu si vous avez besoin, si vous avez des questions. Je parle français, notre... Ami uh, ici, résident, il parle aussi un peu. Alors, so, so we we'll get started. Um, I think we're going to introduce uh, our our guests on this panel. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Thanks for the invitation. Um, we're uh, Marita Mukun and, and I, Ivo Stodolski, were the directors and founders of Artists at Risk. So, as uh, Katie was saying, we're um, We've been in existence for at least 10 years as artists at risk. Uh, it's a long time, 10 years in, in the art world especially, but we're now you know, at the intersection of human rights and arts, which is a really special place to be. And uh, we've been working together since about 2007. We have a project, a uh, uh, long-term platform, uh, Perpetual Mobile, which has been running many, many different platforms like Realigned Art, like um, uh, Roma Art, uh, Romani P Emergency Pavilion, uh, like a uh, special show we did on Perestroika at the time, very, very early on. But we're, we're going to today uh, first introduce our guests and, and introduce ourselves a little bit. And then we'll show you a little bit about artists at risk in general. And then we'll go into some uh, works by the artists. So Marita, please take the word. Uh, also, from my part, it's, it's uh, thank you for joining us to this discussion, and we can keep it as a discussion. We are not so many today, and uh, we are really happy that it's basically we have here. It's uh, artist at risk residents and friends of artist at risk. If we may uh, say so, Nikita is is here. hasn't been our resident, but is a supporter of the work of artist at risk as well. Since we are in Art Asia now today, it is the artists who joined us here are from Ukraine and, and from Afghanistan. But as Ivor said, that Artist at Risk works globally. And we have also worked artists from, from Asia, from, from different countries. It's, it's basically such as uh, Vietnam, uh, Malaysia and, and so on that unfortunately the state of artistic freedom and, and human rights is it's alerting in, in many parts of the world. Of course, it's when we talk about Asia, if we look at uh, artist, uh, Uyghur artists from, uh, from China, if we look at the situation in Myanmar and, and so on, that we have kind of applicants 
it's while applying from around the world, but, but it's since, since now, uh, Taliban take over in Afghanistan. We have lots of its applicants from Afghanistan, and luckily we have managed to get visas for some of them to come to Europe. And, and then since uh, Russia uh, attacked Ukraine, since, since war in Ukraine, Artist at Risk has worked with hundreds of Ukrainian artists. Actually, we have more than 300 uh, residents. Three, 300, we have made more than 300 relocations of Ukrainian artists to art context. So that's the basic principle in, in Artist at Risk, that we host artists in art institutions or in artists in residencies. And, and uh, Evelina, who is here, welcome. She's somebody who has been now artist at risk uh, resident in, in Paris for three months, and the residence is coming to an end, but uh, next step is already there, which came also through the networks and through artist at, at risk. And, and uh, Fareba, it's welcome. I'm really happy that, that you are here with us. Uh, she's an amazing uh, hip hop dancer from Afghanistan. And uh, she arrived in, uh, in uh, Paris uh, last summer and uh, is basically artist at risk. Uh, uh <coughs> is working and was working with the uh, National uh, Center for Dance here in, in France. That's how we often work, that we have many cooperation part uh, partners. And we worked with FANAC Foundation because it's always a long process to get people out, unfortunately. It's from countries like Af Afghanistan and outside of Europe to get uh, Schengen visas. And, and then uh, Nikita is here with, with us. We are really happy you joined us. You have been in Paris It's uh, for a longer time before the war started, but you have now actively also, for example, curated an exhibition in, in the house where we have been hosting artists at risk residents. Nikita a little bit better. Nikita Kravtsov. So yeah, yeah. So it's basically, we would like to give the word to artists to just first kind of introduce yourself kind of shortly, just to, pace. yeah. Well, should, we st should we start with Eva, because Eva's one of our, yeah, with our residents? Yes, yeah, because yeah. Uh, we, we all have, uh, yeah. I think it's good to start with you, Eva. Do you want to just uh, briefly introduce yourself and talk about, so uh, we've been uh, very lucky. I mean, I don't know, we have to give a bit of uh, thanks to the city of Paris because the city of Paris has given us a house in the 16th uh, district. Um, very beautiful maison particularly, uh, three floors uh, with trees and a garden. It was kind of falling apart. It was not used for five, ten years, m maybe more. And we renovated it and turned it into an artistic residence. And Eva and uh, Vasilina and Nina were there, uh, Nina Elba and Vaselina Borianek. And, and uh, so Eva Trinselin was one of the, Evelina Trinselin, pardon me, uh, one of the first well, residents here in Paris with us. And it's a special uh, honor to kind of present you and your, your work. Um, uh, please go ahead. Thank you. And maybe we also kind of extend our thanks in, in the case of is Evelina's residency to UNESCO. Because basically we got uh, uh, 30 grants from UNESCO to host female artists from, from Ukraine. And uh, Eva is one of the artists uh, which has been supported by UNESCO. And this was very historical funding because usually we got it from the heritage department of UNESCO. And uh, before it is uh, heritage department has been only protecting monuments, museums cultural heritage, but f for the first time in the history of UNESCO, when the war started in Ukraine, they actually, it is recognized that artists at risk also has to be protected. We started these conversations win with UNESCO already when uh, the situation got very bad in Afghanistan with Taliban takeover and asked them to support artists at risk. It didn't happen then, but when the war in Ukraine started, they, they gave this funding and of course, we hope that our cooperation with UNESCO headquarters here in, in France also would continue. It's basically, uh, uh, just, just before giving the mic to Evelina, it's, it's maybe worth mentioning that when a uh, war in Ukraine started, Artist at Risk has never experienced such a wave of solidarity in our 10-year history. 
that basically before artists at risk were in touch with us, actually hosting institutions and funders got in touch with us and asked how can we help you. So it's basically before the war started, artists at risk had 26 hosting hubs in 19 different countries from Goa to Helsinki to Berlin and, and so on. But now we have more than 500 hosting institutions. And of course, we want to use this, this wave of solidarity for other artists at risk and always emphasize that it's basically artists have to be protected if from everywhere and therefore we are really happy that Fareba is also here with us here today that it's basically we need this solidarity for all artists at risk. But it's, it's Eva, it's your works are already here on the screen so it would be great to hear about your practice a bit. Uh, hello everybody. Sorry my English is not perfect but uh, I will uh, try to, to talk about myself. Um, I um, was studying in Academy of Art in the glass uh, and it's like specific uh, art because in Ukraine it's just popular in the West Ukraine. Um, this uh, work is uh, the making in Ukraine in the blowing glass and uh, Yes, I think uh, we can change the photo. Uh, uh, I try to popularization the blowing glass uh, in uh, the mm, uh, anywhere where I can do. Uh, I chose this uh, the material because it's uh, the transparent and is uh, you can make uh, in improvisation and you can. Uh, the using uh, the different technique here and uh, I make it a lot of objects uh, before in Ukraine uh, is uh, this is technique is fusing has interior um, the private interior I make it uh, like standard glass and uh, the fusing lamp and mixing of material it's uh, metal and uh, the glass together. Uh, what? Yes. It's the crystallization of the team was. Uh, uh, this is uh, the this is work in uh, uh, Museum of Calligraphy of China. Uh, uh, now in collection. Uh, every three year in Lviv, uh, we have a great symposium of glass, and uh, this year uh, is happened too. B but uh, not a lot of uh, artists come uh, here. I think uh, just from uh, the close country. Uh, so I saw th uh, this is interior of the glass. This installation. Uh, um, sometimes I make uh, take a part in uh, the Land Art Festival, and this is was in Tustan, international festival. I make a salt road. Uh, yes, it's um, I'm put the phosphor and uh, this is installation. Uh, can you come back? <laughs> this is installation, the game of war, and it was made it um, in the near border of Poland, and uh, it was uh, 2000 city year. Uh, it's before war. <laughs> I didn't know that this happened with my country. So uh, this is uh, uh, I found the true. The it's like uh, I make it the some uh, the piece of a mirror and uh, uh, when his cream was Ukrainian, uh, it was uh, land art here and uh, I chose some some interesting place and I would like to to um, found the something synthetic and uh, of material can be um, uh, 
uh, using in the natural uh, object. And uh, it's a problem ecology is uh, same as the material, but uh, I, sh I found this some um, shadow for river because river is a problem with water here and uh, it make it like river but it's the glass mirror. Same. What? Yeah. It's like serial. Uh, this is installation uh, of mirror. I make it like this. Is object. Yeah. Okay, that's the last one. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, we uh, we have uh, we have great. I think we'll we'll have a few questions and answers, uh, like kind of a Q and A later. But uh, we have to move on because uh, yeah, Nikita uh, has to leave at twelve o'clock. He has a flight to catch to Vienna, so we're going to let him go. So before he goes, uh, we'll uh, show some work by him. So Nikita, if you want to come here and just uh, show us what you got on the no on Google, or should send you. I will send you. Facebook? 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 Okay. Maybe Telegram. And it's, it's also, uh, while Nikita is, is kind of setting it up, it's also he created an exhibition. It's uh, after the war started in Ukraine in uh, the house where we host artist at risk uh, residence and, and Eva was also part of that exhibition, which is also it's very important core of the artist at risk and when artists arrive, they arrive in artistic context, and uh, if they want to start their artistic practice, the core of our work is, is to create networks and create possibilities for artists to continue exhibiting and, and creating art. We will also talk about that a bit later, because Eva, your artistic practice also changes, of course. It's basically glass blowing. It's not that, that easy, but we can talk about that after, kind of because Nikita is in a rush. But it's Nikita was also showing its, its works by the artist at risk residence in Paris in the exhibition. So you also kind of connected the community that way. Yeah, and she make wonderful work with uh, broken windows. It was uh, the work about uh, you saw in uh, Kharkov. In Kharkov, the bomb explodes near the uh, trade center and um, it broke the windows. In uh, the a lot of uh, home and house and uh, the office center, uh, all Ukraine is broken. But uh, we uh, the look at for the the beauty moment because uh, this uh, glass uh, you it's not possible how it's broken. It's uh, like flowers of the glass and. Uh, Every time you think how to save this, maybe in future I make some project uh, when I will be mix it uh, the old technique of stained glass and uh, the broken glass and uh, the make um, with uh, this uh, the some uh, objects. Yeah, it was a very strong uh, how to tell installation. Um, what I do, I am um, not a refugee, so I have French family, have my wife is French. So I'm living in Paris maybe near seven years, but I'm not really based inside. I move a lot, different countries, different projects. And um, yeah, so my art was always political, but now it's become more propaganda with the beginning of the war. And I make several works on the walls, like murals. And one you can see near Pompidou Center. I really, I will not speak a lot and take your time because <laughs> my also time because I will. Now I need to go to Vienna to paint another mural there. And um, I have a plane very soon. So yeah, this uh, Viva Le Resistant Ukrainian, very good quality we have of the photo. I will search there why it's a little bit better. 
So here I draw uh, Marianne just to show that uh, Marianne now fighting with Ukraine uh, for the freedom and democracy in the border with Russia and um, to asking some participation from Europe, especially from France because France now become like the main country in Europe after. M but Macron now have this new post. Before it was Germany, now it's France decide mostly. And um, so, yeah, here Marianne fight with uh, with uh, two head um, uh, evil snake, uh, like who symbolized Russian Federation. And uh, the coron uh, imp imperialistic coron is already fall here, lose the, the gems. And no, uh, shortly. Then uh, this work is now может открывать их даже okay. uh, nice. Ух ты. Я схел полот. It's okay, like that. Boom, with my wife I make, s so I, I collaborate with different um, artists, musicians, and um, like different way of arts also we make. I make little installations, little form, curated some projects. And uh, this work we make with my wife, it's a tex collage textile. So it's five meters on, on two meters. And now you can see her in, Gallery Tampograph, uh, Tampograph Sardon in Rio de Repos. We open only Saturdays from 11 till. Uh, oh, it's not mine, but it's quite nice. And uh, we can we can show also the video. We can show you the little video that I make. Ah, okay, this was maybe also interesting. Uh, with Andrei Kurkov, it's famous Ukrainian, uh, Ukraine of Franco-American writer, and uh, we create with him the fairy tale for adults, which names um, the War of Mushrooms, where we explain um, how this starts the war from the beginning, from 2014. And uh, very soon this book will be published uh, here in France with uh, serious with Philo Loco and serious publishing. And uh, also it's arriving now in Germany. Uh, it's already done in Ukraine. And uh, in America it was also uh, printed. And I have a show in New York in, in Ukraine uh, Museum, which also they bought some works for the collection. So, yeah, I will be not spoiling. You can... No, you can just buy the book and read her. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is the pictures from the book. Uh, actually, this was also a funny project, but not about Ukraine. Uh, I will show you the video. Beam. This we record with my wife. Probably. Oh, nice. Which? Cette nuit-là, je veux un créature surnaturel d'un délit.
Что ты хотел? Ой, просто я хотел убрать звук сессии. Lorsqu'on crée son entreprise, il faut faire face à une lutte. The project ends with we 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 work with mostly with my friend musician Yura Hustashka. And uh, yeah, the song we make with him it's about Cold War, and it's uh, was 2000. Yep. But this is funny also. Yeah, I also organized one wall uh, in Rivoli 59, where it becomes a wall where everybody starts to make discussion and put uh, some, I don't know, some Russians write that Chachalam uh, Pizdias. It's so, so funny that uh, Ukrainian will uh, win the sheet, and uh, so some Ukrainians start to answer on this wall. So ah, it's so become, yeah, 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 it was very funny. Yeah, everybody writes something, and uh, I just cycling time to time, see how it grows in very interesting way. What yeah, we put it. But I think it's, it's going, it's live stream, so it's better to have the mic. It's okay, it's not an issue. So, uh, it, but I think you know we we can um, get back to your work if we have a little more time. But yeah, that's yeah, uh, we yeah, get a good idea of what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. Actually, reminded us a little bit uh, the last thing where you said about this this wall that people were responding. The Russians yeah. were coming. You were you were yeah. responding. I mean, we worked one of our first residents um, in artists at risk at the way beginning, uh, almost ten years ago now, mm. was uh, was a street artist called Ganzir. From from Cairo, so he was the one, you know, the very very well known thing near Tahrir Square with a tea carrier on a bicycle. He has this platter with all the tea, and he's on the bicycle, and the, there's a tank facing him. Oh wow! Well. And then uh, so so this was the most famous piece of the revolution in Egypt, basically, yeah. or one of them. And uh, uh, what happened was first they painted it, and then the regime people came, and then they re they put, you know painted it on top of it, and they painted it on top of it, and they painted it on top of it, and finally you know it became this total so like a collage, yeah. a real dialogue, and they won. I mean they basically couldn't win, uh, you know they just put the tank and they turned around the tank and stuff. So this is the the tea carrier and the tank. I think this is kind of what's happening as well here. Um, there's there's so much to talk about, but you have to go really soon. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, one one thing I'd like to talk to you about is is really um, about what you think of how artists, when they're at risk, you know, can work. I know that you yourself came before the war, right? But you, um, you know, you're, you're you would be now of army age. You would be going to fight. So with us, we have a lot of female artists because they can come out. Yeah. But but the question is like, um, what do you think the role of an organization like ours should be? 
um, yeah, to help course. artists at risk from all over the world, not just Ukraine, but anywhere else. Absolutely. How should we work so that people don't only leave, but they come back? You know, what kind of, how do you see it? No, but I'm absolutely uh, also not for Ukraine, absolutely for uh, for equality and for all the countries uh, to be in the same um, like the same rights. Was uh, and uh, yeah, it's very important what organization do to help an artist to give the grants to bring in artists from some like very hot spots. And uh, because I have also some friends uh, before from Iraq, uh, I meet them in Cité des Arts. Uh, which was also uh, saved uh, from a regime, and uh, now they based, I think, in in north, in north of France. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, I have a wonderful friend uh, who is political cartoonist. Uh, is uh, Kiano Shramizani. He's um, our together friends. He's very important now um, cartoonist in France, but he based in Helsinki. Yeah, I mean, my, my question kind of was like, so we've had residents, for example, we had a really important, um, he's a photographer and filmmaker from Aleppo, from Syria. Mm -hmm. He won the like uh, Photo Arl Prize, or he was a guest of honor. He's, he's won the European Short Film Award, the London Short Film Festival Award. But he was very angry at another international organization, I won't say the name, because they just bring the people out, they give them a grant, they give them two years, you know, like to live, mm -hmm. and they never like really work with them as artists. But plus, the most important thing is they don't think about them going back, or they don't think about their connection to their source of the country they come from. So he's saying you're just creating this brain drain, and you're creating this like Europe is getting all the great artists, the great scientists, the great you know thinkers, and who's going to rebuild those countries? So. Uh, yeah, that for the sure. I understand. Yeah, of course, it's very important. If everybody will leave from the country, there will be nothing in the country. <laughs> you know, that's what we tell. Also, there is we have some territories occupied by Russians, um, and uh, we tell that if all the people will leave, uh, all the Ukrainians will leave from these territories, it will be just the uh, Russians. You know, so it's important that also you some Ukrainian need to stay there. And uh, when our soldiers will give it, take it back, and it will be very soon, so it will be more easy to um, re repair, uh, repair um, these um, places. So, and uh, for the artist, I think this is very important, not to become a, like become a citizen of uh, another country. It's just. Artist, he is uh, even when he is refugee, he's a still artist, and it's important for like um, the war take all the fields of the life, like informatic, uh, cultural, and um, in all the ways. So that's why uh, I think that it's important just to give them a way to speak here, possibility to speak, and. Uh, this is uh, what um, organization can do maximum, not just to bring them and uh, give the houses, yeah. I think it's this kind of a... Thank you. Thank you, Nikita. Do you have to go now or you can stay a bit with well, us? A Cu couple of minutes, let's, let's move yeah. on. Just wanted to say thanks. Yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe just yet just to comment what Artist at Risk is doing, that for example, in Ukraine, we have residences also back in Ukraine we support artists who can't leave Ukraine, who doesn't want to leave Ukraine. And we also is advocating more and more to funders that those artists who go back, that, that they would also get support. Like this artist in Aleppo, it's crazy that as he's, he has to come back to Europe, we, we create job opportunities so that he can make his money and go back to Aleppo and run an art space there. That shouldn't be the case. But it's what some of my friends do, they all the time move there, here, like Jana Kadyrova, she arrives, she makes a open the project, we get some money, we send for army, and he go back, so, like, uh, yeah, so it's how it needs to be. I think it's that's, that's the way it works, but it's kind it's of... It's not how it needs to be, but yeah. how it yeah. works really yeah. more uh, efficacious. I think the, the situation for Afghans is not as uh, easy, they can't go back, uh, and, and so for many people in this, you know, uh, planet it's not at all easy ukrainians in this way crazily to use this word are privileged 
uh, during this time to say that word, but they don't need a visa to come to Europe or the US, sometimes it's easier. Um, and so we have, as artists at risk, never had that kind of incredible volume. We have now 1,850 Ukrainian artists on our uh, waiting lists. That's a lot of people. Whereas uh, from Afghanistan, we have uh, 450 uh, artists with families. That's 2,000 people. And we've only gotten a few dozen out. Whereas with Ukrainians, we've gotten hundreds, like around 300 Ukrainians have already found residencies. Some of them are not so at risk, and some of them just you know, want to come for a little bit for a project. And we say, sorry, our work is actually to work with emergency situations, not you know, a nice project in Paris. So we, we, we're helping people whose houses have been bombed or who really needed to leave. But with Afghanistan or, let's say, Kenya or other places, you just can't come and go and come and go, and this is really a different situation. So we were very pleased when finally, among our first uh, residents from Afghanistan, Fariba Kamsimi, uh, w arrived uh, w with the help of the Fanak Foundation and with also the help of, uh, above all, Siddiq uh, Barmak, uh, who recommended your work. And so we would be glad to hear something about your experience. And you've been working with the Centre National de Danse, that's your host uh, in Paris, Pantin. And, and well, please tell us something about your work. It would be also cr great to hear if you want to share a bit what you did, did what you did in Afghanistan. It is also because it's basically she's somebody who joined a hip hop group in Afghanistan in 2016 as a really kind of pioneering, uh, pioneering female hip hop dancer, right? That it was a group with with only its uh, boys, its is uh, male and so on. But uh, if you want to share little bit also what you did in Afghanistan. It's just before Taliban great or it would be great to hear about that as well. Mm, okay. Um, hello everyone. I hope you will be fine. So the first I want to say um, my English is not very well and uh, I wrote uh, something about myself and, and the first I want to uh, read this and next uh, I can show my mm, my uh, paintings and my um, picture about my hip hop dance. Great. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, merci. So, um, I started um, my artist uh, career um, when I was uh, 15 years old, and um, I started by myself by uh, YouTube and practice with myself and uh, without any teacher. Because um, of I love uh, paintings, uh, and uh, after that I start uh, to be interesting by dancing, uh, mostly hip hop and uh, contemporary dance. Uh, because I love uh, the uh, liberty and all of the movement um, and and the dancing uh, that give me the feeling to explain myself and my uh, views. That uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, maybe I didn't uh, choose them. Uh, most easier uh, art in Afghanistan, the country who the people don't uh, have a kind uh, and gentle uh, vision about the woman, um, and especially artist woman, because uh, <coughs> because uh, the music is not really uh, welcome, and uh, you can imagine uh, what the um, radicalist part of country thinking um, about uh, dancing, and when the dancer is a young woman. <coughs> And um, uh, by the way, uh, I love dancing, and uh, when I ready to, um, and uh, I I was ready to pay for that. Um, for example, uh, <coughs> I always cutting my hair, um, and I wear the um, boys dresses uh, for have um, camouflage uh, with the <coughs> boys looking um, psychology. Um, I feel more uh, more safe, but sometimes, of course, it doesn't work. Um, and uh, after that, it was uh, the feeling of um, the fear. Mm, so, and uh, I think now um, it's a possibility to um, to to have uh, to arrive my um, wishes, and I can continue my uh, dancing in here. And merci. Well, great. Yeah, if you could show us some of the paintings, and this is just use this like a normal Google. Search for your work. If you know where to find it. 
and it's it's kind of uh, and Fareba is looking for the video that she arrived with uh, two other dancers, and we are really happy because uh, the hosting organization is uh, National Center of Dance in Pantan, and they organized the apartment and 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 basically arrived there. So that's how artists at risk often works that in, in some cities we do the hosting also ourselves, like in, in Eva's case, but also in Paris we kind of cooperate. It is with other hosting organizations like the Center for Dance, that when somebody is a dancer, it's the best to arrive in the context where you have is professional dancers, so you can continue your practice there. And that was the case of Varib. I, and I think it's very, it is also useful model that it takes many people, it takes many organizations to work together when you work with artists from challenging contexts like from Afghanistan. Then in this case, as I mentioned, we work with Fanak Foundation, we worked with Sid, uh, Sidik Parmak, which is, uh, who is a well-known uh, film director based here in Paris, who directed, for example, a film called Osama. It is after uh, when uh, Taliban failed in Afghanistan uh, last time. So basically, we have worked a lot with individuals from Afghanistan. In Artists at Risk, we have uh, solidarity groups, and uh, we have geographical uh, groups. Like in, in the case of Afghanistan, we have something called Artists at Risk Solidarity Team, and we work together with uh, Afghans who are from the field of visual art, who are from the field of film, who are from the different fields, and they know the best who are the most at-risk artists, because it's very difficult to get visas to come to Europe. And as Ivor said, that we have more than 400, still more than 450 artists back in Afghanistan, so we have to kind of prioritize that who are the artists who are at most risk, we need to get out. And for example, we have hosted Afghan filmmakers in Goa, because you don't need a Schengen visa to get to India and, and so on. And now slowly, after we have worked for one year to get um, visas for Afghan artists at risk in Germany, they are slowly arriving. That, for example, we just had an had a event with Afghan artists at risk from different fields, and they are now nine people who are hosted in Berlin. And we just got good news that it is... Uh, a female singer has got the humanitarian visa and so on. So it tells the nature of the work that it's more than one year we have been working on the visas just to get artists slowly out. And of course we can't stop that work. That is basically, in the meanwhile, luckily we have managed to relocate more than 300 Ukrainian artists because they can come to Europe. But when it comes to many other artists, that's not the case. It's a very long time span to get papers for artists to come. Apparently... No, actually, we don't work like that. Um, so, I mean, we do have uh, area specialists, right? And we have uh, specialist solidarity teams. And so we have artist risk uh, solidarity team for Afghanistan. And so one of the people in that team, or one of the kind of greater kind of round, you know, of that team, is called Sidik Barmak, who's a very famous filmmaker. And he, for example, with Mohsen Mahmal Baf, who's a very um, internationally well-known Iranian filmmaker, they, they were part of creating what we call the list of lists. So when the Iran, uh, the, when Afghanistan uh, was basically taken over by the Taliban at the time, uh, last August, we started working together with many different people in New York, in Paris, in Helsinki, in Berlin, and all these lists came together. And so there's people in London created lists, people in Cambridge and so on. And all these lists were gathered by artists at risk and became known as the list of lists. So we have the most complete list of all Afghan artists um, that need to get out. And among those that were the highest priority to, to be kind of extradited were, uh, you know, among others, uh, Fariba. But uh, th that was done together with a specialist team, and that's called an artist at risk solidarity team. But it's not necessary that those are organizations in the countries, 
but there are people who know their country very well. Like, like in the Ukrainian context, we have like an artist at risk Ukraine solidarity team, and the, the main matchmakers are Ukrainians, but they host them here. No, 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 it's actually really f people in our team. So it's, they're not necessarily uh, there or anything. So that we, we really select them carefully. And we also have to make sure that we don't have fakes. It might sound strange because we're in this kind of situation. Everyone thinks artists at risk, you have to help them. But we have a lot of uh, artists, I mean, not a lot, but we have quite a few from all over the world. They say, okay, I want a nice ticket to Europe and I want to have a nice three month residency or stay for a year. And they say, sometimes they say, oh, I would like to first go to Berlin and then I want to go to Paris. And then I'd like to be in London for a while and I have a nice project I want to propose to you. And then, you know, maybe you can pay me to spend some time in Nice. Uh, you know, okay. Uh, and, and not only that, but there's also others who say that I'm about to be killed and so on and so on. And then we find out, well, no, you just published your latest novel with the Iranian regime and they paid for it. Your famous uh, Iranian writer lady and, uh, well, sorry, you're famous there because you work with the regime. You can't come with this as I artists at risk. I think it's there for the situation. It's with Ukraine. It's very different for artists at risk, because basically, of course, we make the priority that that we kind of relocate people from the areas where you are most at risk. It's like, of course, it's and now people can't go back to Mariupol, for example. There's nowhere to go back to, so we continue the residences and so on. But otherwise, we work with dissidents, which means that, for example, we. We work also at the moment with Russian and Belarusian dissidents or Iranians, as, as Ivor said, or people from Myanmar. But we really need regional specialists to make sure that they are dissidents. And so the procedure of verification is much longer than with Ukrainians. It's basically because our team members, of course, they are Ukrainians. They can very, very kind of fast identify who come from most at risk areas and relocate them first, but not only them, because there are so many hosting organizations. But there's a question, it's just there. Okay, nice to meet you. Please go ahead if you can do that. Yes, uh, we do. It's first of all, it's kind of normally artists at risk residence. Is there anything from three to 24 months? So this is basically artists arrive. First we work like, can be that takes one year to get the visa. Artists arrive and they arrive in a hosting institution. And the core of our work is that we work with professional artists. We don't talk about refugee, not immigrants. Therefore artists arrive in artistic context. And we have work on that, that is basically that they get connected to local networks or there are some kind of next steps also. That for example, in case of Eva now, she will continue, she will uh, travel to Berlin tomorrow because she will be part of uh, another project which is funded by Creative Europe with, with many artists from Spain, from Germany and from Ukraine. And it's, it's actually a project for Uh, it will be like workshop and collaboration with um, uh, countries, uh, Germany, uh, the Spain and France and uh, we are like from another country like Ukraine. Uh, 
in first it will be uh, the five days uh, intensive uh, in Berlin is uh, after uh, we will going to the Madrid for five days and after it will be in Bordeaux. Uh, after uh, our together work, uh, we created this project. Uh, in the um, half year uh, after, we will uh, made uh, the like exhibition, or uh, I think it will be maybe a performance with uh, the theater, and uh, it will be selection. Uh That's just one e example, but we also kind of follow up artists, kind of if they return uh, when they are our alumni and um, basically it's of course it, it depends on the opportunities but we try to kind of link them to different exhibitions productions and so on and not only in the country where they arrive to that if you for example arrive in finland it's very let's say from iraq it's very important that you re recreate your connections in whole of europe because in order to make your living as a visual artist it's not possible to only be based in Helsinki. So for example, to give an example, we, we hosted uh, two Iraqi artists, it's just both of them are visual artists, and, and both of them have already been exhibiting in, in Paris, it's, but they are independent now because we assist also artists in getting into local funding system, learn grant writing, and, and it is basically, our aim is that, that artists could continue as professional artists. Of course, it depends, as we know, it's, it's difficult to be an artist even though you are from France or you are from Germany. It's a precarious position. So, of course, it depends how it goes with each case. But, but that's our aim, that artists kind of would connect to local networks. We had developed different kind of mechanisms. One of them is, is a little bit like, let's say that Nikita curated an exhibition with artists from everywhere and Eva was part of it that we have something we call peer artists and peer curators. So we link artists also to certain local artists or local curators or theater makers who know the networks well, and, and they can kind of also guide in the local context. And in many cities, which are our permanent hosting cities, 26, we have local advisory councils, like in Helsinki, it consists of national theater, public uh, radio, company, dance in for Finland, theater in for Finland, and, and so on. And for example, they are the ones who curate the residencies, because let's say that there's a theater information center, so they know all the working opportunities in whole of Finland, and they try to find, it is basically also the networks or working opportunities for artists who arrive. So that's, that's the core of our work that we try to give artistic opportunities, but of course we also it's to that extent we can, we, we help with the local, it's uh, paperwork and so on. And often as we know that Eva, for example, first stayed with artists in exile here in Paris. It's basically after she became an artist at risk resident. So as I said that often, and, and now Varepa is, is also working with you, that often it's this patchwork and it overlaps also. And, and so it's, it's not a competition, it's, it's, more, the, it's more the better it's, I, I think everybody is, is kind of trying to do this work and it, it takes many organizations and networks before an artist is kind of, is basically settled somewhere if you can't go back. Uh, I want uh, to like uh, to, to thank uh, Ivor and Marita because uh, they like professional and know uh, what to do with uh, artists. Um, before I not feeling this, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no need to be sorry. So I think that's that really is the key thing about our work is compared to many uh, organizations. I'm not so aware of your work, but in in internationally, you know, when we started, even those people who were being taken out under the kind of aegis of, uh, there were only writers basically. No no other genres were being taken care of at the time ten years ago. Um, but they didn't treat them really as artists. They just said, We're s you're so lucky that we give you a roof over your head and a bed and here's the key and good, have a good time, you know, enjoy. And often they were far away from the center of the world, you know, they were somewhere in northern Norway or Sweden and they didn't have any access to becoming, you know, a writer in those countries. 
so it's really important that we work with artists as artists. I think Marita was just saying that, but I'll say it again anyway. And that's I'm happy to hear that you feel that way, that we did work with you as an artist and give you some opportunities and showed you around and introduced you and that you have a next step kind of coming up. And that we're here at Asia now, and so you know your name will be in circulation. So it's really good. So uh, we've had a little co uh, technical complication here, but we finally um, we found. I mean, we have this uh, on our website. Uh, we've been. It's been such a mass of Ukrainian artists that we don't even have all the Ukrainians, obviously, on our website. But uh, we have a website for you. Uh, would you like to just tell us a little bit? We see some of your works here. It would be nice to hear a bit if you want to tell that what you have been doing when you have been in Paris in Inter. But we see National you wanted Center to show for dance paintings. and also visual arts. Is, is if you want to tell a bit. I mean, you wanted to uh, see some of your paintings. Is this something you want to show? Um, paintings or pieces? Or do you want to show more your hip hop uh, con work? What is more? Maybe it's good to kind of, if you kind of think about it, I mean, it's kind of if you want to tell a bit what you have been doing. Uh, no. Okay, it's up to you. But it's basically, it's I think it's the way we can do this, our work, is that it's, it's a network of peers. So we work with a big network of hosting institutions, art institutions, artists in residences, individuals like Nikita, who engage is basically because he's already here. So it wouldn't work otherwise. It's very horizontal structure we have. We have some 20 people working with us, but many more because this work is amplified. And let's say that when we work with its Afghan solidarity team, people who are from Afghanistan working with us are very engaged, of course, in their own, own kind of colleagues. Same with if we work when we work with Ukrainians. Our team from Ukraine, some of them are still in Ukraine. They are very engaged. It's same implies when we work with Belarusian or Russian dissidents and so on. So it's also the engagement of our staff members. It is or people from Iran. I mean, it's basically they are very engaged, our regional kind of specialists from there, trying to get the real dissidents out, trying to get those people out who are at, at biggest risk. And I think this is the difference between many NGOs who have kind of more civil servant type of people working with them. And it's same with hosting institutions, because we don't have a big pack of money. Yes, we can pay for living grants, but in Europe we expect that the hosting institutions, they give their staff time and they give it the place to live. So it means that it's also, it's not about that, that we say that you get two, three thousand euros a month to host this person and you get an apartment and staff time. It already is an engagement, even though we'll give a living grant, that people do it, so that they want to do it, they engage doing it. And now when we read the reports from uh, Ukrainian artists, for example, we collected UNESCO, we are extremely impressed to learn ourselves what they have been doing. It's just impressive, it's amazing that what kind of engagement is there. And I think that's the core of the work, that when we work with other people who are engaged, it kind of amplifies. It, it's not, it's not the, it is kind of the, money that you have like kind of millions or tens of millions. No, we don't. It's, it's kind of very limited budget, but it's more based on this, that people engage. And often our residents who go back when they are safe, we don't expect anything, but they have uh, started artist at risk residencies. We have an artist at risk residency hub in Tbilisi in Georgia, started four years ago by our former resident, and they are hosting tens of artists. Same, it is basically, uh, for example, in, in uh, what is happening in Tunis. Our former resident who is now settled from Syria, he's part of the hosting team of AR Tunis. So it means that actually they contact us and say that, hey, we want to do the same. They don't have to do it, but, but it, it happens often. And they know what they have been going through. So it's a long answer, but it's, it's, I think, do you have any other questions? I think uh, it's, it's, we have been talking for a long time.
Okay, I mean, uh, as I said before, I mean, we have uh, applicants, they come to us through our website, and they come, they know us through many, many different channels, but they apply to us through emails, through our forms. If you saw the front page, we have a host, you know, we have a form for you to fill in. But um, we also have, you know, many, many channels, like, you know, there's LGBTQI channels, there's human rights organizations that send us their candidates, there's so we get all kinds of we have really long lists. The thing is, we need to have background checks done on them. So we do have area specialists. And for, for Iran, uh, the Persian kind of uh, language uh, group, is we have two or three people that do those background checks. And I can't tell you their names, no. uh, because otherwise they would be at risk themselves. Um, uh, and But they do very deep checks, because they want to make sure that nobody is supplying who's actually from the government, for example. And we've had cases, um, and then also th when they when they are selected, you know it's a long and difficult process to get people out. So I mean, if you if you would like to h help us, <laughs> it would yes, fantastic. Well, we have a really interesting case you might be interested in. So this is a, a, a female fashion designer, which might be part of Hi Bita, uh, um, female fashion designer based in. Um, She's, she's from Iran. She was very young when she was already like selected by CNN to be like a, one of the you know, talents of the future, you know, worldwide fame. Uh, she escaped Iran uh, and uh, ended up in Turkey. And in Turkey, she was registered with UNHCR. But because of this, the, the government of Turkey was in charge of her because they took over from UH, UNHCR in terms of the actual logistics. And they put her in a tiny little town and she's stuck there for the last five years without a passport, and she can't even leave this town without permission from the Turkish authorities. And she's still designing online, working with Paris and many other capitals of the world, doing fashion, but she can't get out because she doesn't have a passport, and Iran, of course, won't give her one, and Turkey doesn't care. So, so we need somebody in France to write a very strong letter to the French authorities, to the embassy of France, saying, you have to help this woman and get her temporary papers to come to France. She's really wanted here and has a great future in France. So please help us. So we have to work case by case and really fight for one visa at a time. It's really hard. If, yeah. you, if you are also looking for contacts in visual art, one of our re regional specialists is visual artists. So you should just contact and ask what you are looking for. I mean, they are connected for sure. Even though they are in exile. Marita, I think we should let Fariba, I mean, I, I, I did we finally got through to some of the images, so we hadn't, uh, the video unfortunately was not uh, passed on to us, but I think it's good to see some of the work. Many people are really kind of surprised, they think, you know, Afghanistan is all these people in like burkas and, and jalabas and, you know, they, they just came out of the Stone Age. You know, it's not true. <laughs> they were wearing mini skirts and dancing, you know, techno only a couple of years ago. And here, th here they are dancing hip hop. And there's, it's really kind of, uh, Western people don't have that understanding that, no, uh, this was extremely advanced and up-to-date society. Many of them were educated in, I don't know, uh, New York and London or Berlin or Paris. And, and then they were suddenly thrown to the dogs by our armies and said, look, you can take care of your problems yourself, and that's when the Taliban came back and is now in charge the second time. And apparently, according to our most recent kind of conversations with Afghan artists in Berlin, the, the conditions are almost worse because people lost so much because they already were working for 20 years to build up their lives, and they lost everything. Uh, before that, they, they had really very little, but now they had a huge amount and lost it all. Uh, it's very tragic. I don't know if you would like to say anything about these images we are looking at? Thank you so much. So here we had a um, program. Um, and um, a part one of, um, uh, you don't know the Bagh Babur, but uh, we have a program in Bagh Babur with all of um, boys. And uh, I was um, the only girls uh, between, um, um, between uh, 50, uh, boys, 15 boys, and um, it was uh, so hard for me for um, to be in a, a Muslim country, and uh, because um, um, sorry, <laughs> because um, another uh, girls should uh, wear hijab, um, and maybe you know, 
uh, and um, it was so hard for me. And uh, when, I, when I went to an uh, gym, I always wear uh, like boy clothes and um, um, I cutting my hair <laughs> like boy. But I like that style. But um, um yeah. <laughs> do you see something else? Is this something you may see that may happen in your business? Do you know about the last one? Um, Go on. I had a lot of um, photo about my paintings, and now you know yours. Well, I, d I, I don't. We didn't uh, get them from you immediately. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here we had a um, program in the American University in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. There's a little technical issue, I think. No? Um, no, one of the um, boys is now uh, in another country in Espania, Pakistan. One of them? All of them? <laughs> I don't know. Mm. So can you maybe this is a painting you want to talk about a little bit? Yeah, it's uh, my paintings uh, with uh, watercolor and so with a uh, pen and pencil, both of them. Thank, thanks a lot, uh, Fariba. It's, it's basically, actually, we are right now also hosting some Afghan artists who arrived in France, but they just came to artists in residency in Berlin. They are filmmakers. It's in order to kind of connect to German uh, film scene, because I think that's the European reality also, that when you are, for example, it's like they are filmmakers, they arrived in refugee center in rural France, so it's not easy to get artistic connections. And in this case, they are now in Berlin working on a kind of new film production. So we also is kind of work across its European countries. And sometimes artists move, they can arrive, uh, let's say they arrive in Helsinki, but then we figure out that it's better for them to be located in Germany. And since Artist at Risk Network has more than 500 hosting organizations, that allows us to move people. And sometimes we are forced to do it because of visa regime. That, that when visas are running out and, and there's no next step, we had to, for example, move people to Serbia, which is non-Schengen for some time to find the next step and not to become illegal and, and so on. So it's this whole kind of patchwork of moves and therefore it's important to be a transnational network in order to work like this. But I think it's... Uh, there's one more question from the audience. And, and I, I think, think we, we have, have to wrap, wrap it up. It up. It's yeah, yeah, been please. a long discussion. Yeah. Yes. Okay, we, I'd like to answer that because I mean to talk about that because it is actually quite shocking how I don't know uh, how how uh, people in authority behave um, towards not only artists towards people. It's very arbitrary, and it's often they privilege their own little circle of friends and their own little circle of bureaucrats giving each other jobs uh, to be able to decide things and not do anything for those people at risk. So what is really insane <laughs> is that in Germany, one year ago, we submitted this list of 450 people with 2,000 dependents. One year later, they started a new Bundesaufnahmeprogramm, wonderful word, uh, and the word is about as long as their nonsense that they produced. They invited um, only organizations that are like their German friends organizations. And we had several big name German organizations say, but wait a minute, the most important and longest list of artists is from Artists at Risk. Why don't you, and, and what they're doing now is they, 
give these organizations, German organizations, the privilege, quote unquote, to enter the same names onto another list. That's it so far. So you're allowed to give the names again. So they're, and they're not paying them. So that what they're saying now is that we should beg <laughs> to be allowed to work for free a second time to put them on the list and then they decide who they're going to take out and we're thinking of either making it into a scandal because that's what it is one year later that they think about this and then they make you work for them for free or to, to say okay we did get the most important artists out now and we've been doing that so we've been paying also for artists underground in Afghanistan and so we our, our, our priority is is the artists and not the bureaucracy but I think this is where we stand as like an organization we're an activist organization Katie, bye bye. And we're going to wrap it up pretty soon. But uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the where we stand often is that we like to work really hard. We get really good cooperation with the Goethe Institute or with. Uh, like uh, Swedish uh, national uh, residency centers, really UNESCO and so on. But then when it comes to the bureaucracies, they really uh, privilege their own little circles. That's a disgrace in case of Afghan artists. We have all the information. We had to fill in a new form with 150 questions for each artist. 150 questions. And we it's they don't give any staff time. And when artists arrive, they don't give any funds. Artists arrive in camps which means that then we should kind of fundraise in order to relocate artists so that they, they would get hosting organizations. So th this is the reality. And, and I, I think it's also in France, it has slowed down, as, as you say, that al already with Fariba and so on, that you need to have a, to show that they enter to a hosting institution and guarantee funding. But I think the same in France, that is basically you can't stop lobbying the government because as you say, and, and in Germany now, it's only for artists who are in Afghanistan. And most at high-risk cases are in Pakistan and Iran. They had to go because they are, have been tortured. They're about to be murdered. They couldn't stay in Afghanistan. They, they left. Of course, there are some people in safe houses. That also doesn't make any sense. So maybe we need international solidarity to point that out also for a German government that you can't do it that you exclude those people who are at mo most high risk outside of Afghanistan. But we need kind of to join our forces. Not only, we can't only rely on German government, we need French government, ne we need EU to give humanitarian visas. Afghan artists at risk are targeted at social groups. As, as kind of musicians, visual artists, it's not about individual artists. You just can't practice art, that's a crime and you are at risk. So it has to be EU level question, it has to be level in each and every country. We can't leave the uh, artist behind in Afghanistan. Yeah, I mean we I can't think do it. Uh, this it's is not possible. I mean just if you want to know the politics of that, that's that's really important at the moment. That um, you know, humanitarian visa uh, doesn't exist in many European countries. And um, they have stopped enter you know, the entry of many uh, uh, countries altogether, for example Russians. Uh, so uh, in, in many Nordic countries, they've stopped Russians coming at all, but they don't have even a back door, the so-called humanitarian visa for those that are really fighting the regime. So they're saying you should fight your own fight, go to war there in Russia. How are you going to do that? So th there's a contradiction in the European logic. And so what we need to do and what we're doing is we're working with the European Parliament as well. Uh, to The European uh, the vice president of the parliament is a colleague and we're trying to introduce a uh, European level humanitarian visa and we have the a very big group of NGOs called EUTRP working with us. We just came from a meeting in Athens with a lot of Russian uh, civil society activists and, and you know uh, all, all the different foundations and they're trying to help us with that but it, it, it's a very uphill struggle because every European country w has its own little policies. And I want to say that uh, just Ukrainian woman artists can leave uh, our country, and uh, a man uh, can't leave country. So that's why we are just here, like famine. <laughs> yes. But that, that's a uh, Ukrainian lot, uh, decision. A lot of artists in the uh, like soldiers in the uh, war now. 
a lot of my mm. friends. Actually, this is also interesting if you're interested uh, from the point of view of Ukraine. We, d we were now approached by MOKA, which is uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art uh, in, uh, in Ukraine. And so we're going to be working with them to kind of open MOKA in Europe before it can open in Ukraine. And so they're thinking about it. And we also are supporting residency spaces in Ukraine. So we're currently funding and creating new residencies within the country for those male artists who are at risk, who don't have to go to war. And, and of course, we need funding for that. We're just this, uh, you know, we now, our staff is, we have about 20 people, but that's because we're, Goethe Institute is funding us, let's say about five to seven uh, positions. Um, but when Goethe stops the money at the end of this year, we have them, some donations from Andy Warhol Foundation, Tiger Foundation. Uh, some Art Basel. Art Basel gave us some money, which is really nice. Uh, here we're not getting anything, uh, as far as I understand. Um, but, uh, you know, it would be very important for you to understand we can't uh, support artists without the funds to do it. It's just not possible. And this is the case of Afghanistan. We have raised the issue in Germany that it's even though we will submit these forms for free, there are no funds to host artists once they arrive. Of course, it's better to be in the camp than be in Afghanistan, but it's not good for German society. It's not good for any society. It's better that artists can arrive as an artist and there's some kind of funding mechanism. And I think it's still ab about Ukraine. It's the same. It's very important to have funds to support artists in Ukraine because there are also artists who want to go back. But of course, there's no funding left in Ukraine for arts. And it's a bad reason that you had to stay in Europe in order to be funded in case if you want to go back. But I think we're quite a small group, so we could continue uh, like in a one-on-one -on -one or kind of a little group after the, after the talk. But thanks for staying and thanks for coming. Uh, you know, it's been good to see you all. So thank you very much. Thanks a lot.